Sean Wilson from Epicenter Cycling. I'm here today to review everything you need to know about the Electra Vale Go. This is a very popular bike that we sell at Epicenter. So today we're going to review all the details regarding the motor, the battery, the display from Bosch. It's called the Bosch Kiosk Display. The shifting mechanism, the brakes, how to remove the wheel, how to maintain this bike. So the power, to start off, this uses the Bosch kiosk display. There's a power button right on the top next to the screen here. You just tap it one time. You'll feel the button press to turn the motor and lights on and off. Now this system you can adjust to where the lights always stay on or you can change it in the, the bike shop can change it so you can have the option to turn the lights on and off. When the bike comes from the factory, we always set it up so the lights stay on for safety. The amount of battery the, it, the lights use is so minimal, we recommend to always ride with lights on. So if that is set from the factory, the light button on the screen will not do anything. You have to go in and adjust that. The screen is centered right over the stem here, it's super clean. You can remove the display when you lock up your bike. If you want to prevent someone from being able to use the bike, if they were to steal it, you can take this display off with you, throw it in your bag, and if someone were to try to steal your bike, they cannot use the bike without your display. So that's a nice security feature of this bike. When it comes from the factory, the display is bolted on from the back. There's a one little set screw that holds that thing on. If you want the ability to remove it, um, I'm going to show you right now how to remove that bolt so then you can use the magnetic backing to keep the display on when you're riding and be able to pop it off. So the first thing we're going to do is take a 4 millimeter Allen wrench, undo this bolt 100% from the top of the stem. All right, so you're going to take a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench and there's a bolt right here that you're going to remove. You'll feel the magnet pull on the tool as you do this in the bolt, but just remove that bolt all the way. The magnet will try to hold the bolt in place there. If you have some nails, you can try to pull it out. Okay, that's your, that's the bolt we are removing. Once this bolt is removed, we can pull the display off and the magnet is what's holding it in place. Okay. So this mount is plastic, so just do a very light torque when you go to tighten that bolt back up to the top of the stem. I would recommend to sit on the bike and you can look at the display and make sure it's aligned properly. So if it's not, loosen up that bolt a little bit angle it to the right spot, tighten it back up. And that's how you now have the ability to take the display with you when you lock up the bike. Kiosk display, there's two buttons on the top, power button, and that's to turn the light on and off if you, if you enable that feature. The buttons are gonna be over here, right next to your, where your grip is. So it's easy to adjust while you're riding. You've got your plus and minus button here. This will change your assist. As you hit the plus button, you will see that it changed the color and the mode at the top. Nice and easy to read the different settings. Then you've got the side to side button. This will cycle through the functions on the computer. So if you hit the side button, you've got your clock, range function, you can set your each trip, see how far you've gone and the time you've ridden. If you, if you press this button on the bottom here, you can reset the display for each ride. You can hit that bottom button again. We're going to go cycle to the right again. You could look at the power, your power, your K 
calories burned. If you have a heart rate strap, you can sync it to it. Max speed, so you can look at all your details from your ride. It's pretty sweet. Different ways to view it. There's your odometer. You can sync this up with the Bosch app. If you want to do down, have rides displayed has to be synced to your phone. <laughs> this is your settings mode. If you are in this mode and press this bottom button here, then you can go through different settings for your bike, sync with Bluetooth and all that from the setting feature. Okay, the walk assist button is right up here. Tap that once and then you hold the plus button and the bike will push itself up a hill so you don't have to push a 54 pound bike. There is a charging port right down by the cranks here. You can plug in the charger. Very simply there, if you have power in your garage, just plug it right in, super easy. Make sure when you're done, you close that all the way so it's nice and sealed. If you wanna charge the bike with the battery, use your key turn it clockwise, the battery will come out just a little bit. Press down on this lever, and you're gonna pull the battery out all the way. You can then charge it right there. If you charge the battery, and you're hitting the power button, nothing's happening. You ride around for a bit, doesn't work. You can't get the bike to turn on. What I recommend you to do is to do a hard reset on the battery. So if you take a small Allen wrench, like a two millimeter Allen wrench, Right on the side of the battery, there's a little hole here. You can put the Allen wrench in there and hold it for about 10 seconds, and that'll reset the battery. When you put the battery back on the bike, there's a little guide tab at the bottom that's gonna fall into this hole on the bottom of the battery. You, you wanna softly set the battery in the bottom there. Press down on this lever turn the key clockwise, and then you're gonna push the battery all the way in, turn the key counterclockwise, and that'll keep the battery locked into the bike. Alrighty, so this bike will require minimal maintenance. What you're gonna be doing at home, keep those tires inflated. These are Schwalbe Supermoto X tires. They're very high quality. They have good puncture protection. Number one way to prevent getting a flat tire is to keep the tires inflated properly. They range from 30 to 55 PSI, so depending on your weight. If you're under 150 pounds, you should be running below 40 PSI. Um, above it, you can play around up to 55 PSI. Um, try, try different uh, PSIs uh, and test it out because it does make a big difference in how smooth the bike rides. So the lower the PSI, the smoother the ride. If you go too low, then it's possible you can get a pinch flat. So be careful with that. The other thing, other than pumping up the tires, you're gonna be lubricating the bike chain, keeping the bike drivetrain clean as possible. Take any old lint-free rag, put the rag around the chain, and just backpedal. Get in the chain clean as possible. Do that for a few minutes. If it's really built up with grime, take some uh, degreaser. You can spray the degreaser over the chain, wipe it really well. Take your chain lubricant, apply it right on top of the chain, back pedaling about four or five times. Once you've applied the chain lube all the way around the chain, ride the bike for a minute, come back, take the rag again, wipe off all the extra. You can do the same thing by holding the rag over the chain while you're back pedaling. If you need to remove the front wheel, what you're going to do is use a 6mm Allen wrench or you can use the lever from the rear wheel and insert the tool into the front axle to remove the wheel. If you need to remove the front wheel, you're going to use a 6mm Allen wrench, insert it right in to the through axle and you're going to unthread all the way 
until this axle can be slidden out 100%. Now if you're riding and if you don't have an Allen wrench on you, you can use the lever from the rear wheel. This lever can be just pulled straight out and that is a six millimeter Allen that you can then insert right into that axle to tighten or loosen. It's nice and easy. This lever lives in the rear axle. It'll stay in there really well. When you put the wheel back on, make sure the rotor is going between the brake pads and the brake caliper and you set the wheel directly into the dropout. Slide the axle back in. You need to kind of wiggle it around until you can feel the, the sweet spot where the axle will go in there. Take your Allen wrench, tighten it back up, and just get that nice and snug. All right, if you need to adjust the seat height, there's a quick release lever. Open up that lever and you can slide the seat up and down, nice and easy. The seat post is pretty long. This bike is one size. It's all adjustable for many rider heights. It is important that this minimum insertion line, this is the max that you can raise the seat in the seat tube. So right where this line is there, you cannot go past that line. If you were to ride the bike with this line above the frame, it's possible that this would, the leverage of the post could break the frame right here. So it's very important that this, these lines are inside the frame. So this would be the max height. Once you find your sweet spot, make sure the seat's straight along with the frame. Clamp the lever. If the lever is too loose, you'll be able to twist the seat like so. If that happens, what you're going to do is open up the quick release again, hold it in place, and then turn the dial on the left side about a half turn, and then tighten again. If it's too tight that time, open it back up, counterclockwise a quarter turn, clamp again. You just basically, you don't want to be able to spin the seat with your hands when it's clamped. It's really annoying if that seat's wandering on you when you're pedaling. You also don't want the seat to migrate down over time when you're riding because sometimes you don't feel it and all of a sudden you've ridden 20 miles and the seat's too low and you got a lot of pain or pressure in your knee. You can adjust the seat angle with these two bolts on the seat post. If you were to tighten this bolt, and loosen this bolt, it will bring the nose up. If you ever feel like you're sliding forward on the bike, bring that nose up. If you have too much pressure here, you can tilt it down by tightening this bolt and loosening this one. Once you find your sweet spot, make sure you go back and forth, tighten them evenly so both bolts are tight so it doesn't rattle loose on you when you're riding. Now this saddle is very comfortable. It's got a pretty soft foam built into the seat. It will take you a good 20-30 rides to get adjusted to the saddle. If you still don't like it after that time, come into the bike shop. We have a whole wall of different saddles to try that are different widths, with different cutouts, different materials um, that we can put on this bike. Some people really love this seat, some people don't. So it Try not to judge the bike by the seat. Know that we can easily change it out. The Veilgo comes with a suspension seat post. So as you're hitting bumps, this will take the edge off the bumps, making it a little easier in your back and your body. This bike has a nine speed um, derailleur system. The shifter is very easy to use. The trigger shifter, there's two paddles here and here. The big paddle shifts to a lower gear for uphill to increase your cadence. The higher gear for downhill, they go faster. Now this bike is sensing your cadence, so you wanna be in the right gear to where you're spinning nice and smooth. 
if you're pedaling very slowly, the motor is not going to work how it's designed. So you want to be, be in the right gear so you can spin nice and easy. You'll notice on the veil, the rear rack is already built in with the fender mount. It's nice and clean. We recommend rear bags that will clip on to the sides. We have two options that we recommend generally. The Ortlieb is our number one seller. This is a full on dry bag. It's waterproof. It's super durable. Um, this is called the Back Roller Classic Pannier. Comes as a set of two for 190 bucks. They clip on and off very easily just by pulling up here. The Bontrager City Shopper bag, very popular. We sell a lot of these. They come individually for $115. These very simple, easy to use. They just clip right on and off the side of the rack with this tab. You can Velcro the bottom if you don't want the bottom to bounce around. Full grocery bag size. They're water resistant. They have a side pocket here for smaller items. Installing the bag is extremely easy. What you're going to do is you're going to slide the bottom hook onto the rack first. And then you'll set these tabs on the top of the rack. When you release this, it'll snap around and the bag is very secure. It's not going anywhere. When you go to remove the bag, lift up here, nice and easy. All right, that is everything you need to know about the Electro Veil Go 9D.